And then we shall we have a, a next speaker, um, Mr. Stephen Ho. Yes, Stephen joined the Hong Kong Electric after his graduation, and has thirty years of experience in the power industry. He is a professional engineer with both local and overseas engineering institution. He has worked in various technical position for multi-discipline infrastructure project covering power generation, transmission and distribution of electricity, tool wall, etc. All being overseas and Hong Kong. With Hong Kong Electric, Stephen is the head of environmental affair, leading a team of professional engineers responsible for environmental compliance, licensing, regulatory and sustainable development of Hong Kong Electric. Welcome, welcome Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, Felix. So Dear friends, good afternoon. I'm Stephen from Hong Kong Electrics. Thank you very much for the invitation of Green Councils. I'm glad to be here to, for exchange over these cyber platforms to, to, about today's topics. I think the topics on climate change is getting hot, not because of the temperature is hotter than before. I mean the pre-industrial periods. In the CE's policy address delivered yesterday, Hong Kong will pursue more vigorous interim decarbonization targets, such as to reduce Hong Kong's carbon emissions by 50% before 2035, 2035, as compared to the 2005 level, and no more co-fired power by 2035. In, that, in addition to this, today's I think we need to look into the adaptation of climate change as climate change is happening now. As stated in the title, I'm going to elaborate, elaborate a little bit on climate risk and the situation in Hong Kong, followed by how the scientists of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or in short, the IPCC project to global climate change in their sixth assessment report released in August this year, and then sharing of Hong Kong Electric's decarbonization initiative, as well as the climate resilience measures. Okay, what is climate risk? I think it's a simple question and simple answer. According to the IPCC, climate risk is the combination of physical hazards and the vulnerability of exposed elements. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, let's take an example. Rainstorm, there is a kind of hazard which may pose a risk. For example, a bench in the park, just like the picture, has no tolerance to flooding where it is exposed to the rainstorm in an open park. That is the climate risk for this band. Then we have a outlook of the reason whether you when, where, why. I think rainstorm is just, just a kind of weather event that people of Hong Kong are familiar with. We know there are some extremes. Unfortunately, we experienced all in the yet to be finished 2021. Hong Kong, the first day of this year is the coldest New Year's days in 16 years. And then May, we just passed, is the hottest May in Hong Kong's his, uh, history. Don't forget that the last July, the 2020 July, is the hottest month ever. And that's Hong Kong. How about other places in the earth? Are you still remember the winter storm in Texas, America, early this year? And a couple of months ago, the heat zone hit Canada and bring the temperature up to nearly 50 degrees. I can't imagine when the ambient temperature raised to 50 degrees. Don't forget that when you got fever, 
your temperature is sometimes 39 or at most 40 degrees, then you have to take in drugs to control your body temperatures. And people in California and Southern Europe experienced the fire weather this year, this summer, hot, dry, and windy. And this weather facility raging wildfire fire in those places during this summer. Perhaps flooding is the most extreme weather event this year. You can't imagine that you are immersed in water of level up to your chest when you're taking the MTL back home. It did happen in Zhengzhou this July, where the maximum rainfall in an hour reached 200 millimeters. It is not an isolated case. London, Netherlands, India, and New York all experienced serious flooding this year. Rainfall and flooding bring us damage and casualty. More than 900 people killed in July this year because of flooding and landslides. Will this heavier or erratic rainfall happen in Hong Kong? Let's see about some figures in Hong Kong. According to the government's figures, the highest hourly rainfall is 155 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And the bad rainstorm signal issued by Hong Kong Observatory represents an hourly rainfall reaches 770 millimeter. You still remember 28th June this year, Hong Kong Observatory issued the first big rainstorm signal in that morning. Then you may ask, will our infrastructure vulnerable to the rainstorm impacts? Okay, the table here is some design reference. Uh, for example, if your facility is designed for once in 200 years climate event, for example, the rainfall, the rainstorm or rainfall, then it can tolerate 145 millimeter per hour rainstorm or rainfall maximum. So it seems that our tolerance our, or the tolerance of our infrastructure should be adequate enough at the moment. Mm, is there any pro climate projection for Hong Kong? Yes. Hong Kong Observatory, of Hong Kong Observatory, do a projection, do a climate projection for Hong Kong. Uh, HKO or the Hong Kong Observatory uh, project the temperature, rainfall, and sea level change of Hong Kong using the IPCC fifth assessment report, that's AR five, and some statistical methods, according to. Hong Kong Observatory, the annual rainfall in the late 21st century is expected to rise by about 180 millimeters. This 100 millimeter may not be comparable with the uh, rainfall per hour rainfall just mentioned before, but nobody know this 100 millimeter rainfall will pour into Hong Kong in an hour. Under high gas concentration scenario, LCP 8.5. LCP means representative concentration pathway, and 8.5 is a figure to indicate the extent of global warming effect, and which is directly related to the greenhouse gas greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere. And if under this scenario, HK projected that. The temperature is expected to rise by 1.5 to 3 degrees Celsius and 3 to 6 degrees Celsius in the mid to late 21st century. We are now working hard to keep the temperature rise to 2 degrees C or below. 
And under another greenhouse gas concentration scenario, that is LCP 4.5, the temperature is expected to rise by 1 to 2 degrees Celsius and 1.5 to 3 degrees Celsius in the mid and late 21st century, respectively. Under the high, gas, high greenhouse gas concentration scenario, the annual mean sea level in Hong Kong are expected to rise by 0 0.7 to 1.3 meter. And as I say before, these projections are based on the previous IPCC assessment report, AR5. With the AR6 released in August, I think the new scenario updated with the data in AR6 will be available soon. Then, what is happening in our planet Earth? Let's see the latest work of our scientists. The IPCC published its sixth assessment report, or in short, the AR6, almost seven years after the AR5. The report said global warming will exceed 1.5 and 2 degrees Celsius unless deep decarbonization occurred in coming decades. That's why our CE in her uh, policy address announced yesterday pledged that Hong Kong need to slash half of its greenhouse gas emission by 2035. And UN, UN Secretary General described it as a code red for humanity. So what are the red codes? Some highlights in the AR6. Increase in the frequency and intensity of extreme weathers, including high temperatures, heat wave, precipitation, drought, etc. And increasingly experienced concurrent and multiple change in climate change, uh, climate change impact drivers. And we cannot rule out, actually, is, is the report say, and think it should be the scientists, will not rule out the, likely hope, the low likelihood outcomes and the compound extreme event, and which should be part of the risk assessment. Okay, we know that the UN Climate Summit COP26 will be held in UK this November. And the AR6 will play a crucial role in the discussion. So I would like to share some material extracted from the summary for policy maker of the IPCC AR6. The map on the, in the left hand side show that the observed heat extreme and the confidence in human contribution to the observed change. That's all over the world, everywhere we can observe hot, ex hot extremes. And almost everywhere it is, con it is confidence that the hot extreme is contributed by humans. And the graph on the right hand side shows the different emission or development scenarios coupled with its projected temperature rise. According to the IPCC's AR6, different economic and econo economic and emission development scenario represented by this shared socioeconomic pathway, and only low or very low emission pathway will keep a global temperature rise to below two degrees C. The same observed change happened in heavy precipitations on the left, the, gra the graph on the left hand side, as well as the draft, the graph on the right hand side, with the confidence of human contribution to the observed change. 
And then, what is the low and very low emission pathway? In the IPCC AR6, it described the economic development and emission pathway with uh, five different pathway. SSP1 means a world of sustainability focused growth and equality. SSP2, in simple terms, is BAU, business as usual case. And to the extreme is the SSP5, a world of rapid and unconstrained growth in economic output and energy use. From the graph on the right hand side, we can see that only the SS, only the two SSP1 cases, and SSP1-1.9, which represent the low and very low they will reach carbon neutrality around 2050 and 2075. Thereafter, it will negative, its emission will become negative. That means the greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere will be reduced by means of, example, carbon sink technologies or carbon capture technology. Will significantly increase and by 2050, it will double the greenhouse gas emission of today. The IPCC AR6 also projected the physical tra climate change under different global warming level. From this, you can see that if, if we follow the SSP5 pathway, that means uh, we will reach the, temp the global temperature rise will reach four degrees Celsius before the end of this century. Then the extreme event for once per 10 year per 10 year will be increased to nearly every year 9.4 times more than now and the extreme event happened once per 50 years will increase by almost 40 times in particular the intensity will also increase up to 5 degree hotter than nowadays so we can foresee the significant change, the significant physical climate change under the extreme so shared socioeconomic pathway. And the same, the IPCC AR6 make the same similar projections for precipitation and drought. Okay. In engineering context, if there is a problem, there will be a solution. And decarbonization is the key and unique solution to climate change. I'm here to share some Hong Kong Electric's decarb uh, decarbonization January. I think we still remember in CE's policy address, carbon neutrality before 2050, 2050 is advocated. And, the, and in this year's policy address, we have a clearer pictures of decarbonizations. More RE, no more coal, firepower, energy efficiency on conservation, etc. So let's see our generation portfolio, decarbonizing our generation portfolios. We start the switching from coal to gas project couple couple of years ago and the coal to gas projects is progressing well last year we commissioned a new gas fired generating unit which bring us the gas share in our generation fuel mix to 50 percent and significantly contribute to a carbon reduction by 25 percent as compared with that of 2005 level Next year, we will commission 
another new gas fired generator, generator, namely L11, and an offshore LNG terminal. The later one will secure our natural gas supply reliability. And by 2023, 2023, when another new gas fire generation unit, L12, is in operation, we, we will further increase our gas share in our generation fuel mix to about 70%. And we can achieve about 40% reduction in carbon emission as compared with that of 2005. Beyond that, beyond 2023, we still have the capability and capacity in the existing Lama power station to increase further gas fire power generation to 100%. And we will work closely with the Hong Kong government, our authority, to work out a plan to phase out the coal fire generation before the target date, 2035. Another important pillar is renewable energy. Our Lama Wind, yet, is still the largest grid connected commercial scale wind power facility in Hong Kong since its commission in 2006, more than 50 years ago. The 800 kilowatt hour capacity wind turbine running every day to produce renewable energy for our customer. And once upon a time, our solar PV installation in the Lama Power Station was the largest solar PV installation in Hong Kong. Nowadays, it's still a significant or a large PV, one of the largest PV installation in Hong Kong and producing nearly 1 million kilowatt hour of clean electricity for our customer. To encourage renewable energy application, and development in Hong Kong, we have two projects in place, the fit-in tariff scheme and renewable energy certificate scheme. Our customer can generate their own renewable energy and provide and supply connect to our power grid and earn the fit-in tariff. And other customer can purchase our renewable energy certificate, certificate to show their support to the RE initiative. And we are now working on developing a large scale offshore wind farm. Actually, it has been the development work or the, <coughs> the feasibility study work start 10, almost 10 years ago. And now we are working on to further enlarge the capacity of this offshore wind farm for from 100 megawatt to 150 megawatt. And we expect that it will be online before 2027. We will work closely with our authority to make it available before that target date. For ourselves, EENC, Energy Efficiency and Conservation, also plays a key role in decarbonization. For our office operation, we set target on reducing water consumption, paper consumption, improving building energy efficiency, use more EV. All these in all these initi initiatives will contribute to reducing our carbon footprint. On the other hand, we we also help our customer customers to decarbonize. We promote EV to our customers, facilitate the installation of EV charging facility. And so as they can be, they can make them more easy to switch from fossil fuel vehicles to cleaner EV electric vehicles. And this will also help decarbonize Hong Kong's transportation sectors. Okay, the last topics is resilience measures. Um, Maintain reliable power supply is our key mission. And it become a critical matter in climate resilience. Last year, we achieved our supply reliability as high as 99.9999%, the sixth nine, 
What does it mean? Average customer minute loss in last year is less than 0 0.5 minutes. And in fact, we have achieved this figure or less than one minute figure for 12 consecutive years since 2009. How to make this good supply reliability? We have in place different measures to ensure resilience under climate change situations, such as high temperature, high ambient temperature, stronger typhoon, powerful thunderstorm, rising sea level, and significant rainfall. Take some examples. Still remember the rainstorm worldwide mentioned before, Hong Kong is a coastal city and vulnerable to storm surge. Don't worry, to make our system resilient, we build anti-flooding features in our substation to protect the equipment and to secure and to secure a very good supply reliability. Another example is typhoon. Strong typhoon will bring us rainstorm, stronger wind, lightning strike, etc., which are detrimental to the normal operation of electricity transmission and distribution system. Fortunately, our electricity transmission and distribution network is built primarily underground, in tunnel, or buried under seabed, which makes the system has very good tolerance to adverse weather. In conclusion, Hong Kong Electric will endeavor to maintain our electricity supply system in healthy condition round the clock to ensure reliable electricity is delivered to every household in Hong Kong in an environmentally friendly manner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, in the meantime, we welcome any question to, for, for, for Stephen to, to reply. In case you have any question, please um, type in the uh, question box. And Stephen, we have we have some uh, oh we have a couple of questions for for you uh. the uh, the first one is um uh, you have talked about a climate resilience measure and how far should should company go for preparing climate resilience yeah because additional additional investment might need a lot of um, money. Yes, um, I think it's quite a, a good question, but difficult answers. Uh, in some of my previous slides, I saw a design, a table of design figure, mentioning that, um, for example, the rainfall, uh, for, for example, if your facility is very critical and you, your design or your engineer consider that it should be designed to cater for extreme event happened once in 200 years, for example, the rainfall, that means they can the facility can tolerate a heavy rainfall up to 145 millimeter per hour. And when we counter check with the climate projection, and, the and then I think our Hong Kong Observatory will provide an updated projections based on the IPCC AR6. If the figures give you sufficient margin, then you will consider that your facility is good for climate resilience. But you may vary this parameter by doing a scenario analysis so as you can justify your investment against your the potential financial impact due to the climate change risk. Um, are there any good reference, a book or a guide for simulation of the climate change risk or, or so kind of, so or what you call a scenario analysis? Um, that's difficult. That's the most difficult part of the questions. Um, according to that, there is different uh, in the society. Actually, there is a demand for the for the uh, different company to disclose its um, uh, climate risk exposure. 
and different company may do different uh, assessment to address this demand or the request. I think uh, nowadays uh, there are a lot of um, uh, guideline or um, assessment criteria for the climate risk published by the so-called TCFD Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosure. They have different guidelines on this and you may make reference to this guideline for doing your uh, uh, scenario analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question. Um, recently in the northern China, there were different arrangements of the um, suspension of the supply of the electricity. In the past, uh, this kind of power suspension would not, would not affect the residential customer. But um, this year in mainland China, some of the residential customer were also included. It might be related to the reduction of the coal fire power plant and will the high reliability, you said six, six of the, the, the power supply um, in future affected by the transition to the non-fossil fuel power plant? Um, I can say, in Hong Kong, we have a very good uh, system. Both the regulator, I mean the authority, the Hong Kong government, and the power companies. We have a very robust system to call the scheme of control agreement. And every change or every uh, investment to be uh, of the power company has to be thoughtfully reviewed by the authority. And <clears throat> we must do a very prudent planning and design to ensure the four energy policy objective are met. For example, the real safe, real safety, reliability, affordability, as well as the environmentally friendly. So under this criteria, I think the power company will do their best for transition to a green power supply for Hong Kong. That is as uh, CE's Policy address announced yesterday that we will uh, phase out all the coal fire generation by 2035. Um, there are some other questions. Um, <laughs> this will be very challenging. Huh? How do you justify using natural gas in the Hong Kong power supply as a greener approach? Yeah, because natural gas still contribute significant amount of CO2 to the atmosphere. Yes, um, I think as Felix, you mentioned that uh, traditionally we use fossil fuel to generate our electricity because this reliability and proven experience in the system, uh, both uh, engineering as well as the fuel availability and supplies uh, security. We can purchase this fuel from different places in the world. And gas, natural gas, is the most clean, low carbon fossil fuel today. And we think using a, a transition from coal to gas will significantly reduce our carbon emission. That is, uh, it is not. Um, uh, one step change. We need to gradually change. As you mentioned before, we need to maintain our good supply reliability. So we need to be prudent in moving every step. Natural gas will provide us a very good choice of reducing our carbon emission, which can contribute about 50% carbon reduction as compared with coal. And as CE's, announced, as CE's policy address mentioned before, we will explore other technology, including the renewable energy. We will explore to build a new offshore wind farm. And through regional collaborations, I think we can achieve the carbon neutrality by 2050. Another question is, um, what is the current renewable energy capacity in producing overall power supply to Hong Kong citizens? Mm -hmm. I think the, 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 the renewable and the 
the when RE share in the energy fuel mix is not very high as of today's, the replan, I think, the, as well as the Hong Kong government's pledge, we plan to have it reached up to about 4%, 2 to 4% in the coming decades. I, I remember the, the government reported that currently only less than 1% for the is in the uh, renewable energy yeah, in, in, in providing the energy to Hong Kong. Okay. Yes. Um, another question is, is Hong Kong Electric considering, you have mentioned some kind of wind farm, but is it, is Hong Kong Electric also considering other renewable uh, energy, including like um, ocean wave or tidal power? I think, uh, uh, I think as a uh, engineer, I think our minds are, op are always open. And uh, the most, uh, I think the nowadays, the most uh, promising renewable energy technology is wind as well as solar PV. I think uh, we, will uh, we will proceed more um, wind power and solar PV power in the coming futures. And while we will also keep in view of the development of other renewable energy technology. Okay. Uh, I think I'll go through all the all the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Yeah.